How are you now? How are you now? How are you now? Brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange and broadcasting from the studios of Sydney in Gadigal Country. It's the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast, Season 8, Episode 15. Remember, if it's talked about enough, it's a thing. A reminder, all of the advice contained in this is, uh, what is it? General, general advice. General in nature. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. Um, I'm James Whelan, Investment Manager at VFS Group. I've also got some pretty ordinary... It's pretty ordinary internet connections going on here, but I'm sure it's going to be okay um, in the end. We'll see if it mixes out in the wash. If not, then it doesn't matter. Um, I'm joined here by Heath Moss of HLO. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm now, I'm at VFS. Very soon I'm not going to be at VFS, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, I'm joined here by Heath Moss of HLM Investment. Heath, how are you now? Very good morning to you, James, and to all our watchers and listeners out there. Uh, yeah, very, very well this morning. A bit early. We're doing this one a little bit earlier. Just, just had my wee bits and uh, coffee, but uh, we'll get through it. Yeah, mate. Um, well, anyway, thanks for joining us. I've, I've got to do the visual thing. I'm a white male, age 42. I'm wearing a, my, one of my favourite sweaters. Uh, it's a blue, this really nice pastel blue uh, polo sweater that's really good. Um, anyway, so that's the visualisation that I like to do to make sure everyone's sort of on board with where it is. We're also live, well, not live, but we're on YouTube here as well. Now, Gregory, our producer, uh, bonjour. Gregory, if you're out there, he did snap at me that I have to make the introductions a lot tighter, a lot quicker. I should get it down to about 20 seconds here. So, so I think that we're doing okay there. So um, this episode is being recorded in Sydney. It's the 21st of July, 2023 AD. Now, Heath, am I coming through laggy still like that? It's really ordinary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of a sync problem there, but uh, I think we'll have to just push through it. Okay, okay. Now let's go. Now, we've got a few things to discuss. Um, it's going to be a really quick episode today because it's such a busy time. I just on – first off, look at this. i got the banana. That's the last, the, last, the last of that banana. This is the last last 10 minutes of its life before it uh, before it has to get thrown away. I think I'm going to go for it in the last possible moment. That, that's, uh, that's, going to be my that's pretty good for a breakfast. banana cake. Yeah, banana it's getting bread. into that stage. It really is getting into that stage where you're going to have to do it. Now, market um, – NASDAQ was took a bit of a bump. Took a bit of a bump. Took a bit of a hit last night. Um, mm. What was it off about two percent on mainly on two big stocks, Tesla and the Netflix. Even though the reporting wasn't super bad, it was just uh, some things mm. in there about margins. I think some stuff. What was it? I'm trying to figure out what the, the Netflix news was, but I think it's uh, subscriber growth and, and and margins. And again, it, it, they were both priced for perfection. So unless they came out with massive beats. I think it was going to be hard for them to see, you know, green uh, last night. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. Have you got the charts up there yet? No, not yet. Yeah, hang on. I'll just fill it up here. Yeah, yeah, get through there. Uh, on, hurry up. Yeah, I'm going to put that up there. Let's see. I've just got trading yeah. view on here. Um, but anyway, yeah, they, 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 weren't, they weren't bad reports by any means. Um, I, ha I had a quick uh, squeeze through them. They looked like they met market. Um, expectations maybe maybe a little bit above, but like I said, these these stocks have rallied so hard and are priced for so much perfection um, mm. over the last few months that I think uh, the market is like, we'll just take take some off off the top here. And uh, I mean, something like Tesla also got the rebalancing next uh, on the twenty fourth, um, so that's yep. going to provide a few headwinds there as well. So maybe the market was like, okay, we've had enough. We'll, we'll, We'll just uh, stop it right there. It, it does seem that way. I was listening to the I don't know, the, the Comsec uh, the Comsec podcast came up this morning uh, with Tom Petrovsky doing his usual thing, talking to Craig James, who I got a lot of respect for both those guys. And yep. Craig was sort of the, that throwaway comment, just going, "If it's not, if it's not absolutely, if it's not beating by the amount that it's expected to be beating by, then mm. it'll get." profit taken and that seems to make enough sense to me to go okay you know that makes that that's good enough maybe then we'll finally see that mike wilson from morgan stanley and I, I i've got a lot of respect for these guys i listen to morgan stanley managed to get me through COVID effectively um mm -hmm. following their ideas and their motion but mike wilson has been banging the drum about this market needing to correct or the market is going to correct the bearish call that they've had most of the year has been wrong and at what yeah. stage, not, not not to harp on it, because, I, you know, like, you, you're only as good as your last innings, but at what stage, not to talk about Mike specifically, but at what stage do you stop being right? It doesn't matter what happens. So if, if now the market did come off for some reason, 15% or something yeah. like that on a valuation reset, you, yeah. 
if so, if someone has been saying it's going to be coming, you know, there's people who are saying, oh, the, the, the next crash, the next crash, the next correction is coming in, and then eventually it does come in. It happens to be six months after they originally called it, and they say that they were right. You're not, because yeah. you're not right. No. If, you, if you don't time, if you don't get the timing right, you're not right. No, no, yeah, and you can you can be really right in this market, but yet so wrong. And uh, Morgan Stanley have missed out on probably a forty percent rally in the Nasdaq um, by not being you know active and being that uh, that uh, negative bearish drum. I mean. Look, I, I'm I'm with Mike on on a lot of his points. I agree with him 100. percent Fundamentally, I mean, a lot of this rally doesn't make sense. But I haven't been beating that drum since I think it's October last year, November last year. Um, it's only in the last few recent months I've been saying, "Hey, this this is looking out of whack here. I'm I'm not willing to pay 19 times for a market when uh, you got a cash rate at over five percent and earnings coming off." So, um, yeah, like you said, y- you can be you can eventually be right, but you can be so wrong in between and it can really hurt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely spot on. Wow, my internet is super laggy. I hope this really does come through okay. Um, all right, what's next? Now, your note came out, uh, yeah, which is good. Yeah. Congratulations to it. We're all very proud of it and uh, and are very supportive of that note's coming out. Thank you. Uh, we've got – what else have we got here? So the Australian economy. Let's get to Let's get to Aussie. Let's go local. Mm. We saw an unemployment rate – drop yesterday mm. and the Aussie dollar rallied on the back of that uh 3.5 mm-hmm. percent with a lower participation rate what are you seeing in the Aussie economy enough uh, I mean we're, we're going to go through the same thing we have to go through every single time and talk about is there any change mm. to your rate expectations no I mean for me it's still 50 50 um for August they'll get the quarterly and monthly data out uh, before the next meeting and it really mm. comes down to that. And it's very, actually very similar to the to the US economy in terms of you know, showing really mixed uh, signals. Some of the consumer spending is really soft. Um, we saw Flight Center come out during the week and upgrade their profit um, uh, guidance for the year, saying how you know strong the consumer was, especially in corporate travel, um, and their leisure is turned around nicely. Their total transaction value is now at twenty two billion. Um, that's only a smidge under 2019, which is 23.7 billion. So they're, they're almost totally back, come full circle again. But they're saying the consumer is, is extremely strong and still prioritizing travel over um, anything else. So the Australian consumer still is in, in a half decent spot. But there, there's just so many headwinds to come still for that Australian consumer. We still haven't had rates fully priced in, in terms of the household budget. We've got $264 billion of fixed interest uh, rate uh, mortgages to come over to the variable. That's all going to hit the back pocket um, in, the, in the third quarter, I think. So, honestly, I'm I'm still – it's still – it's a it's a real tough position to call um, the Australian economy in terms of where we're at. And it's very much like the US economy, showing signals from both sides. And, and you really <clears> – <throat> You, you, it's the type of market you could get chopped up in, um, honestly, because uh, the Australian market really hasn't performed as well as the US market. We haven't got that tech sector bounce that the US has. So, um, yeah, it's a tough one, but I'm still saying 50-50 for the RBA. Consumers still looking okay, but with some pain to come. Okay, that makes sense. And I, I'm i just sort of lazily, lazily, uh, lazily bullish sort of on that regard of, just trying not to pick it too much also because I'm just so busy right now with everything that I'm doing. Mm. I haven't had as much time to really pick out the eyes of this market as I probably should have. And amazingly, it's actually been quite beneficial to performance. The less, th- the less you do, the better it is as long as you're invested. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all okay. Yeah. I, and I did make this time last week, uh, what did I make? I made that sort of a vague, could this be the buy everything commencement? And I'm now pretty much pretty strongly behind that. that okay. That, that where that you've got a commodities good to go aussie's okay to go the us is, yep. is going to continue banging on a, a, as it's done bonds are going to rally as well just on that you know that we're going to have more and more it's actually now it's now moved and again sort of just thinking about mike wilson it's now moved from being disinflationary to actually deflationary some of these things he did mention um yeah, yeah. Air, air travel is actually now sort of moving into even though there's huge demand for these things are actually now moving to a deflationary Stance, which is interesting, yeah. that started to go that way, and that's the next thing that we're going to start to see, which is going to be good. And China yeah. is China is disinflationary. Don't forget. It so is. now, and I, I saw the first, I saw the first chat of this one. So if anyone who remembers back to that Christmas episode that we did late last year with 
Kit Low dropped into it. It's always good when Kit comes in that comes on the mm. show because he's always just super intelligent. And I, I respect everything that he says, even when it's just insulting me, which is often. But the, mm. <laughs> the um, Kit did say, and, and I said, oh, China coming back online. Because remember, we're talking about China coming out of COVID at Christmas last year. China coming back online is inflationary, coming back in, buying everything. That has actually been a bit of a letdown from expectations. I think that the expectations were probably. I think the expectations were correct, and I do believe that China actually was uh, was unders. They missed it, and that's yeah. sort of now we have to get used to that. But now I saw the first note. So, yeah, and then Kit did remind me that long-term China is disinflationary um, as they produce things that just make stuff cheaper. That's that yeah. of, of that sort of basic way of going about things. No, it's Stuff's going production, too deeply. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, yep. yeah, so I saw the first note. Jonathan Payne, guest of the show, um, sort of saying, okay, now it's now the time that China is going to start being disinflationary to the world. Mm. And that's sort of the next thing that we're going to see. So that's as as predicted that you had to sort of play it out, short-term inflationary, long-term disinflationary, that that's China. Now that's the next stage that we're going to see. So we are going to see this drastic drop of those inflation numbers, not just so much because of the base effect that we've had, um, that we saw witnessed last week, but just also because it's actually, it is actually just coming off and things are actually cheaper. And also people are running out of money. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, though, uh, the, uh, uh, in the US, they're, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, it's fully priced in for a rate hike next month um, now. Right. Um, so we saw jobs figures last night. Um, well, not jobs figures, but uh, jobless claims coming stronger than expected. Um, that stoked the uh, yield fire over there. And I think that's part of the reason we, why we saw the NASDAQ come off so hard. Um, and maybe why we might see a little bit of correction here in the NASDAQ if yields keep running. Um, those job the jobs market remains fairly strong, et cetera, like it is in in Australia as well. Um, yep. So yeah, but it's it's interesting to see that you know that that uh, rate to hike is fully priced in. It would uh, you know um, power would have to defy history to start raising uh, raising rates again um, if uh, if he does that next month. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, just to note that we are sponsored by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. Mm. Australian Mutual Funds Exchange? Yes, it is. Amfex, A-M-F-E-X, if you want to know anything about any mutual fund anywhere in the world. It's got access to <laughs> over 3,000 right now. Could be more, pick a place, especially in India. Um, Indian mutual funds just continue to crank on. The more that I work on my Indian, my big Indian presentation that I've got to give in a few weeks, the more I just see that it's just as as guaranteed a, a market as you could possibly have and say um, without getting sued or shut down by... ASIC, which, I, you know, hello if you're listening. And, but the uh, now, with regards to myself, I am moving. People have asked where I'm actually moving yep. from and to. Me and my banana are going to go from, so I'm going from VFS, and I love the guys, and it, um, it's all going to be, it's very friendly, very harmonious, because they are still my, my, my good mates, and I've known them for most of my life now. Uh, I'm moving to Shore and Partners. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Offer. Fantastic. An offer from them that was just great with regards to the things that I want to do sort of that next stage in the career that, um, that just sort of, uh, I just couldn't, I just, I, I, I couldn't really sort of get a, get a go of it at VFS. Not because of them, James, it's, it's, it's just different James, place, different place, different, different, different function. James Grealish over there. Is it, is that, is that who's yep. running? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to sit next to him and no, talk shop? No? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I haven't seen James for ages. Uh, no, mm-hmm. James is there. He's doing his what are, what are the market matters, or whatever they're called. Um, yeah, yeah. No, Adam Dawes. Dawes is there. Uh, yeah. Trying to think about who else is there. Everyone's there. It's 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 just this huge acquisition thing. They've got a, a bunch of new people going. So that's the big move for me, mm. which I'm really excited about. That's in three actually weeks. Actually, kicking off. Um, congratulations, first. Uh, but Cheers. also, uh, I actually seen they've been rec- they've got a major recruitment drive here in Adelaide too. Oh, I'm yep. surprised. I mean, uh, yeah, they must be really uh, expanding their uh, their advisor network there. They are. They are. And and always just looking to, to go towards it. So if anyone's got any questions or anything about Shores or the move or uh, anything that, that can be brought out of that or just some ideas about some bits and pieces, I've got some amazing ideas about doing a, a semi-rebrand uh, of where I target and what I do mm-hmm. and how we do it as well, just trying to focus on more of that generational wealth stuff. So that's... Um, and that's that's a big important part of the market that really needs to be looked after. Oh, and on a different note, guess where I'm yes. going tomorrow? Guess where I'm going uh, tomorrow? Well, I'm going tomorrow to be... Saturday. The footy? 
No, I'm going to the commissioning of the USS Canberra. Oh, there okay. It send it off. Send it off to sea. Goodbye. So we're down at Ullamaloo. Got to meet it. I've got the. I got it through the um, the American Australian Alliance, the AAA, um, which I'm I'm attached to in sort of certain parts that I don't need to go into. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, and they got a few tickets to the commissioning of this one. It's the second time in history that a US boat has been shipped, whatever, has <laughs> been named after an Australian city. It's the second Canberra, I believe, that they've, mm-hmm. that they've named it. And and this one is a scary looking boat. Um, actually, I'll see if I can pull it up for you. Yeah, so yeah, uh, who is that's what that, I've got. Uh... Manufactured by is that by um, the guys that are listed here? Um, Hostel, yep. And, uh, Hostel, yeah, yep, yep, yeah. They, Hostel, they, the they US, the US brand of Hostel. Yeah. So beautiful. this is for those who are looking there. I've got the Wikipedia up here. Can you see that in detail? Look at how scary that yes. thing is. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! Yeah, that's uh, um, that's not your normal <laughs> normal ship. It's. I'm going to be, yeah. I'm going to be out there, you know, I, I was seeing if I could borrow some W2s from some of my Navy friends and things like that and go out for my, my full, my full dress uniform. But no, no. So anyway, we're going to be there and sitting, um, just, uh, just to say, I've never been to the commissioning of a, of, of a ship before, but it's good and great. And shows that the, the strength of the U S Australian Alliance is still very much, uh, intact mm. and will continue for many years to come. Yes. Um, yeah. And we're a key part of, key part of that strategy. What have you got coming up for the weekend, right? Um, not much. It's the winding out, uh, winding down the school holidays. Last official day of school holidays here for the kids today, so we'll probably take them out and do something a bit different today. Um, but apart from that, it's, yeah, it's just about uh, getting ready for school next week and the normal uh, cycle of, of schedule of things uh, that comes with that. Uh, so yeah, nothing too exciting here. I don't have footy on to go watch. It's uh, yeah, a little bit of a quiet one for me. Oh, well, that's just how it's going to go. Now, speaking of footy, let's get a tip in and then we'll just close the show off. Okay, you know, we actually haven't said what we think is going to happen coming forward uh, uh, with the markets. I mean, it's all it's all well and good talking about what has happened. Um, yep. Next stage is through. I'm still very much on the buy everything situation. I've seen no reason to change that as much. Mm-hmm. If I was going to do anything at some stage, the bond allocation, because, you know, I've been the 60-40 yeah. nut yeah. absolute since late last year, and that has gone amazingly well, and I wish it was more – I wish it was simpler – the way that I did it. I mean, I really, I've, I've done it with, you know, I've done it with too many products and it should be possible, although this is sort of one of those difficulties of being an advisor for retail clients. Theoretically, I only need four ETFs to get this thing done or even just one yeah. ETF to 60, 40 ETF. But you don't yeah. because you need to have some property in there. You need to have some international, domestic and everything like that. Next thing you know, you've got this whole list of things on there. It's just like, well, I mean, really, I could have just done it with a, a, global, a global ETF a global ETF, something in the NASDAQ, Aussie ETF, and then just two bonds, one, two, three, four, five. That's five ETFs you could do this whole yep. thing with. But you can't yep. because the industry doesn't work that way. So that's just my gripe. Um, yeah. yeah, I see no reason for that to change. I will be decreasing the bond allocation over the next couple of months and topping that up into probably buying um, any market on a pullback that I can get and probably adding, continuing to add to my Indian exposure as well. Yep. That's all I've got yep. ahead of me, Matt. I'm not I'm like, I'm, I'm the less you do, the better especially if you're trying to move a bunch of clients uh, from one place to another as well. If you've got stuff that's in in transit, it's really difficult to actually take any activity on, on accounts. Again, that's a thing about one of the troubles of retail advising. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. Personally, um, I'm a little bit cautious for this third quarter simply because of uh, the many headwinds that I think the market is facing at the moment. Um, I'm not so, so concerned about the Australian market, my US market. I really think there could be, you know, some sort of correction there. Ten percent, nothing, nothing major, but like a nice, healthy ten percent correction there, um, considering the rally and all the headwinds there. But here in Australia, like you, I'm, I'm ready. I'm almost ready to push my buy button on a lot of resources. Um, we all know the copper, you know, story, etc. Um, China eventually is going to have to. You know, really go hard on that stimulus. Um, they they can't keep running the country like it is at the moment. Um, if they mm. want to start hitting some of their their macro goals, etc., five percent GDP, etc., simply aren't, aren't going to make it unless they start uh, really pushing it hard. Um, some of the oh, actually we got to, uh, some of the the monthly figures out this week from China. And they weren't half bad, but again, low uh, low bars and all. But yeah, resources are are, are up there for me. I want to get in on tech, but I've obviously missed that uh, that rally that we've had um, since the start of the year. 
uh, that major fang fang rally or whatever they're called now, the mummers or the I can't remember. That I didn't know they had a new acronym for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they changed the acronym and whatnot because they've added <laughs> Nvidia and now instead of Facebook, it's Meta and you know they, they change it all the time. But on any pullback there, I'd be jumping in, and I'm keen on jumping in something like Snowflake. Um, for the AI and data management side of things as well. Um, about outside Don't of that, forget about will... Equinix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your data. Don't your forget data, about my Equinix, um, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we, uh, I'm also cautious because we've got Australian um, uh, reporting season coming up. Uh, I think it starts the end of next week. We get a first couple yeah. of companies um, announcing next week, and then August it really ramps up. So that's going to provide. A lot of volatility and opportunity as well um so i'll use that uh, we've already seen ansel one of the uh, the major top 100 stocks here in australia came out with a downgrade this week and got absolutely smacked 15 percent uh funnily enough ansel huge beneficiary of the the covid peri- period um excess demand for gloves and ppe gear now coming at came coming out the other side you know their their customers bought too much have got huge inventories and they've got a de-stock so they're actually um you know cutting production cutting employment investing more in automation and just waiting for the, their customers to you know run through their inventories and then to start ramping back up again um but that mm. should be fairly short-lived I, i'll actually like ansel as a very long term um that's uh, a classic play. australian name isn't yeah it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no longer in the condoms and, and all that sort of gear. It's just rubber gloves and industrial gloves, etc. So mm. um yeah, it's a very sticky um business. <laughs> um, <laughs> very very um very very high barriers to entry. Uh, the the compliance on, on gloves, especially medical gloves, are huge and it's not anyone can just manufacture them and get into the game. It's it's actually quite hard. So I think yeah. um They'll be okay longer term, but just uh, not catching a falling off there. But uh, yeah, any weakness in the Nasdaq, decent weakness, I'll, I'll be a buy there as well. I think. Well, very good. Now I've got. Um, I just had. I realised when you said the China and the stimulus and everything that was there, that there was a really good big read article uh, on the FT, which I'm just yep. posting up here. Um, now I do have a subscription to the FT. And this is some good stuff. Always love reading the big read because it's got it really goes into the depth in depth. Just talking about that that things are going to get worse before. Xi Jinping, Xi, 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 I can't do it. Xi Jinping um, announces the stimulus effort. They, they, they reckon he's going to be okay to still let it run dry before really punching it in. If you yeah, understand sort yeah. of where I'm going here. Um, anyway, that's 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 a theory that's going on there. I've got the stimulus measures. This is the M2 supply year on year change, and it's not it's not going back up to anywhere close to where it was during the GFC. Where they no. save the day in the GFC, they're not going to. Apparently, they're not going to come and save the day now. But here's the thing: they don't really need to anymore because it seems like everyone has managed to get themselves through this thing without it. So, here comes the fun of the global geopolitical situation. Now, footy tips, please. Uh, what did I, last week I missed it again, even though I got the the win all right. The margin wasn't there. I didn't think Jimmy. Carlton were going to Carlton were going to flog uh, Port like they did, but uh, they they did, um, and they came. So this week I'm going catch your margin, uh, didn't you? You catch your margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to do just, it again this week. The I'm, a, I'm a sucker. Uh. No, I'm a sucker. I'm, I'm going to pick Brisbane uh, one to thirty nine versus Geelong up at the Gabba. Um, that's paying about a dollar uh, two twenty actually. Um, so one to thirty nine lines at the Gabba versus the Cats is my pick. And obviously I... you had a winner. I had another winner. I am un- unstoppable. I think that's five in a row or something for me. And there have been some absolute cranking wins too. Um, mm. Warriors, that were, yeah, the Warriors beat the Sharks. Warriors were just outside. It's about a dollar ninety six or something like that. Straight win. Don't cap it. Uh, no cap for real, uh, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I don't really have anything that special this week. I think that Rory, uh, Rory McIlroy, Rory McIlroy, as I called him yesterday, will win the Open. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to see. You know, what, actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that screw the NRL. I reckon Rory I reckon Rory McIlroy is gonna win the uh, the the it's, just, it's not the British Open, it's just the Open. So, um, I tried to watch some of it last night. I was just saying it just been too it had been too big and too long a day to be able to get through that, especially with all of the sport and the Women's World Cup. I know, which is I know. Uh, fantastic. It's I had no idea how big this thing actually actually is. I have underestimated exactly how big this thing is. Massive, and massive. Uh, even here in Adelaide, 
we've got yeah. that like the the fed square sort of duplicate here in adelaide next to the festival theater where there's you know new buildings and everything going up they've set up you mm. know a uh, big screen and you know bean bags and chairs and everything for everyone to come watch the the world cup i think we've got a couple of games here but uh uh, old Sammy uh, Sammy Kerr, um, she she's out for the first couple of games. We won we won yep. last night. Didn't we won nil. Yep. Yeah, um, nil. Yeah, yeah. So the um, Irish, uh, Irish team. People are yeah, stoked exactly. about this team. Um, yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah, I, I I I didn't. I just I completely underestimated just how big it actually is. I mean, what did they had twenty five thousand people or something there last night. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. My had a couple of mates who were there and just absolutely just absolutely loving the atmosphere. Loving the atmosphere. Yeah. So good luck to the Matildas out there. I'm sure that they'll go fine. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? The Aussie, dollar, as, um... the Aussie dollar will rally another 5% <laughs> on the back of a Matildas on the back of a Matildas World Cup win. As long as uh, Sam Kerr comes back uh, from injury, uh, <laughs> I think think we could go really deep. Um, the USA, yeah. et cetera, are a pretty formidable force. So, so yeah, they uh, are. It's funny. Yeah. One takeaway that I had from watching it was just that, that the finishing isn't quite there. And then you realise just how what a step above that Sam Kerr is. She's one of the only ones who yeah. can actually put it away. You mm. just need her mm. just there on the end of it just to bury the thing in the back of the net. And, and it seems like yeah. some of the other some of the others just uh, just couldn't get it done. Finish, mm. guys. Come on, last touch is the most important touch. Anyway. Best, best um, player in the world but, in the women's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. She's great. Um, we should get her on the show. I'll see if I can get her on the show. <laughs> I'm sure Wendell she Saylor is, get her. Wendell Saylor is going to come on the show. Um, oh, he fantastic. Was keen to come on. Yeah, I had a beer with him a couple of months ago and he was keen to come on and talk about his charity work. So... See if I, I know who Wendell Saylor is. See, he's a great guy too. He's just absolute legend. Just we're in the middle of Ryan's bar, just having a couple of beers in the sun, and the, the world just gravitates to him. He's just this, this big, friendly guy. Um, yeah. Always, just always super nice. No problem with photos or anything like that. We're just thinking beers like we're old mates and everything like that. Everyone thinks we're superheroes. So it's uh, just one of those classic Ryan's bar, Sydney, Sydney, sunny sort of times. Just drinking, mm. sinking beers with Dell. Anyway. Um, Oh, we're out. That's it. Let's go. Um, no thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, if, you, if you've got any questions, let us know. Thank you to Amfex for the sponsorship and keeping us going. And please go and check out the website and anything else you want to do. Otherwise, guys, thanks very much. Have yourself a good afternoon. Have yourself a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye. Cheers, mate. Just stay on the line. Yeah, no worries.